Tongass is recognized for five minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair, and it's great to have all of you before us as we are talking about this important issue. Uh, but just as a reminder, the task of the Natural Resources, Resources Committee is to oversee the management of our country's federal lands. And in that context, uh, it is important to remember that these public lands belong to all Americans and that they are to be managed to balance multiple and sometimes competing uses. So, for example, recreation, responsible economic development, sustainable resource extraction, renewable energy, military purposes, and conservation of historic American landscapes, just to name a few. As such, they should be subject to strong national standards that protect our shared water, shared land, and shared wildlife, and the multitude of uses that they support. I agree with the majority that any decisions made regarding the management of our public lands should be made following a robust public outreach process. However, in doing so, the Department of the Interior should engage with a wide range of stakeholders. For example, the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA, is one of the primary ways through which the public, through which the public is able to participate in the federal decision-making process, fulfilling the fundamental right of American citizens to have a voice regarding a proposed federal project. Though crafted on a bipartisan basis and signed into law by President Nixon, it is ironic that we have seen numerous pieces of legislation drafted by this committee that limit the public input process under NEPA. For example, by drastically cutting the number of days uh, required for public comment periods, creating broad new categories of projects that don't require any public comment periods at all, and completely eliminating access to the courts. So I'm sure uh, those of you at the table could imagine instances in which you would uh, be deeply opposed to those kinds of changes if you weren't allowed to express your strong point of view. But I really want to address the current process that we're debating today. And so with that, Ms. Leiter, has the Bureau of Land Management held public meetings on the federal coal leasing program? Uh, yes, thank you very much uh, for the question. In 2015, the Bureau held listening sessions uh, here in Washington, D.C., in Billings, Montana, Gillette, Wyoming, Denver, Colorado, and Farmington, New Mexico. Um, and as I mentioned in my oral, oral statement, we heard from about uh, 300 witnesses during those hearings and received uh, approximately 92,000 written comments. Um, now, in the scoping process for the programmatic review, we've undertaken uh, three public hearings already um, in Casper, Wyoming, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, and we have several upcoming uh, this month in Seattle, Washington, Grand Junction, Colorado, and Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, and how and long are these meetings usually, and, and what would BLM's role be versus what is the public's role? Uh, they're listening sessions, truly. Uh, so BLM's role is um, they're usually several hours long. I haven't participated in the coal listening sessions, but I'm, I've done them with respect to some oil and gas policies we've developed. And BLM is very much in a listening role. They're usually held open as long as there are people who wish to speak. Um, we take people on a first-come, first-served basis, and the aim is very much to hear from uh, everyone who's concerned. Uh, you know, regardless of their point of view. And were these events live streamed or was, or was audio made available? Yes, they're all live streamed or, uh, or audio is made available. I believe two have been live, live streamed and the others, the audio is available. And can community members unable to attend these meetings submit public comments? Absolutely. And are state governors, legislators, local elected officials, or tribes allowed to uh, submit economic analyses? Uh, throughout this public review process because it is important that we hear that. Yes, uh, and I believe there is specific outreach to state governments and to tribal governments, uh, and of course we also have a, a separate consultation obligation uh, to do individual outreach to the tribes. And then once you receive them, how are they included in your review process? Uh, uh, poured over. <laughs> it's laborious, but uh, we read them very carefully. Um, and resp uh, have, a, have a statutory obligation to respond to the significant comments we receive. Well, thank you. It seems clear to me that there is a robust public review process for the federal coal program and um, one that respects all points of view 
of the stakeholders. So uh, they're certainly important that we hear them, especially the economic interests. Mr. Keene, I especially appreciate your, your testimony, uh, but it seems to me the process in place certainly, certainly respects that. So thank you very much, and I yield back. Thank you. The gentlewoman's